Hi guys, it's Kelly Latabola here and I am back with another video. This video, well, let's talk about what I'm using first. So I'm using Spring Peonies. I am using Tea Time and wait, I don't remember the name of the sentiment set. Give me a second. Perfect Blend. These are all from Honeybee Stamps and this um, card is actually for a blog hop, which was a collaboration between Honeybee Stamps and um, Coffee Loving Card Makers, which is totally right up my alley, right? Because I love coffee. Um, and so that blog hop was actually two days ago. Why are you just getting the video now? Well, because I didn't like my card. That's basically what it came down to. Um, so this video is extra long as they tend to be when I readjust things. Um, so here I just have some masks that I have cut. I am putting those down so I can get placement for where I want my actual stamping to go. And you'll notice that the mug on the why would I cut off the handle? I would cut off the handle because I'm actually going to use that mug as a base or a cup um, for my flower, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm going in with a baby wipe and I'm wiping off the tea bag that is on the side of it and then also the handle so that just the cylinder portion of it stamps. Um, and I do realize that part of it is missing. I'm not worried about it. You guys know if you've been here before that I outline all of my stamps. So I'm going to fill that in with um, my EK Success journaling pen anyway. So I started putting my flower down for placement and then realized I should probably put that mask down. Um, otherwise, my one layer card is not going to be a one layer card. It isn't anyway at the end of the day, but that's a that's a later in the story, people. We can't get ahead of ourselves. Um, so I'm going to stamp down the peony. There's a bunch of really beautiful um, flowers in that set. I chose just the single flower um, and I'm going to do some leaves behind it just because it kind of suited my purposes. So the coffee cup in the front is masked, the vase is masked, and then I stamp my other coffee cup, and now I'm masking the flower, stamping the leaves. We've talked about this before with one layer cards. Anything you want in the front, you stamp first and then mask that, then stamp the items in the background. I decided that I was just going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment now because my original game plan was to make a scene card. That was my original game plan. I had a whole idea in my head about how I wanted it to look and um, I didn't really get good stamp. I, I don't know if it was just because I didn't take the time to really ink it up real well, um, but so I had to stamp that one again. And then one of the things that I love about um, Honeybee Sentiments is that usually the words are all separate, um, so you can kind of make it say anything that you want. So this 4-2 is actually two different stamps, but um, put them together and then you have T for two and I think it's super cute. Um, so I wanted to do like the little heart, which is also included in the set. And then here is me heading into the game plan of creating this whole scene, this whole background scene. So I'm using a T-square ruler and my EK Success journaling pen to give myself a line here. And I just, I did it at a diagonal because I thought that it would make the countertop more interesting than just flat across. Um, and we're going to get into the coloring. So I started with the vase um, and these light blues. Uh, anytime you're coloring a vase, I went up too high. I'm going to be straight up honest with you guys. You guys know um, it's for real on this channel and we just go ahead and own our mistakes because that's, I mean, that's, you only learn by practicing. So I knew I wanted there to be a strong highlight. That's that white portion that you see me leaving. And then also when you're coloring any sort of clear object, there's kind of like this I don't, this border around it that is white or lighter. So that's why I am not going all the way out to the edge. I did take the blue up too high. There should have been more of an edge at the top because this looks like this glass is filled to the tippy tippy top. <laughs> um, and you wouldn't necessarily have that in real life. Um, but you'll see as I'm going through lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, that I am um, kind of filling in from the edges. Um, blending out those colors so that it, the only white area will actually be the highlight. Everything else will be these blue colors. The highlight was a little bit too large, um, but I know me and I know I'm heavy handed with my dark colors, so it's better to leave a very large highlight and then gradually fill it in than it is for me to start off with a smaller highlight and um, not be able to get that back once I'm done. So I'm going to just keep working on this until I'm happy with the way that it looks and the way that it's blended. Then I'm going to move on to the leaves. 
the tricky part here. This is the trick to clear objects. So this flower stem obviously would extend into the glass, but it wouldn't have that bold black line because it would be in the water so you would be less likely to see it. So I'm just going to continue that line with my marker um, so that it looks like it's sitting in the water. And I'm not taking the darkest colors all the way down. I'm letting the lightest portion be at the very bottom of it. And then for the leaves, I'm just um, coloring mostly to the shadows down into the bottom left. That's typically the way that I roll and that's kind of what I know. Um, and then this one that's curled up on itself, that would automatically be darker because of the shape of it. So if it's curling over itself, the center of that leaf is going to be darker. The lightest edge will be um, the piece that's curling over. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then the leaf that's back up underneath this flower is going to be the darkest one by far. So I did not like my card. And um, sometimes this happens. And I was really struggling normally. Um, so Easter was yesterday. And so normally for Easter, I do um, a Easter themed painting. That's typically what I do um, on YouTube. And this is the first year that I haven't done it. And the reason that I did not do it um, was because I couldn't come up with anything that I really liked. And it, I guess it was very frustrating for me. Um, and I think that a lot of you guys can relate to that because sometimes when we have this vision in our head, trying to get it down on paper is much more difficult than we anticipate. Um, hold on, we're gonna go back to the coloring for one second. So here, you, when I picked the colors, I picked yellows, oranges, and then this pink. Um, the pink isn't going to look pink. Um, the orange, that YRO4 and the RVO4 combine to make a really pretty like dark coral color. And that's ultimately what I'm going for. For this flower, I am adding shading from the base of the petals out um, toward the tips of the petals. And I'm just following the shapes of the petals. So what's already there, trying to curve my strokes um, so that they match the, um, the same shape in which the illustrator drew them. And then again, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, leaving myself a highlight on the edge so that when I'm all said and done, that will be my lightest color. These two petals right up front are kind of curling up over the rest of that. So their shading isn't going to be in the same place. It's going to be at still at the base of the petal, but it's going to look different than the other flowers. Um, tricky, tricky little part in the center there um, where like all of the little bits of the peony are just be very careful that you leave yourself a highlight because that is what's going to differentiate your petals from each other. So um, even if you can only put in um, maybe like just one line of the dark, one line of the mid-tone, and then one line of your highlight, you'll be better off doing that. I think you'll be happier with the result than if you try to fit all four colors in and there and end up losing your highlight. Um, so anyway, I think that we all struggle with getting ideas out of our brains and onto paper. And I certainly was frustrated Saturday night when I could not make it do what I wanted to do. And the reality of the situation is I just didn't know how. Um, my I was watercoloring and my watercolor knowledge only goes so far. And I was looking up tutorials and I was looking up different things, trying to utilize the... Um, the information that was out there that I had access to and I still just couldn't make it happen. And that's okay. Um, I spent a, probably about an hour and a half trying to make that happen. And some people might view that as wasted time. Um, but even though I couldn't get the end result that I wanted, it was still, um, it was still time that I spent learning and experimenting and sometimes that is just, you know what, not sometimes, always. That's just as important as if you get an end result that you're happy with. Um, and for me, uh, because it was Easter and I was trying to paint an Easter scene, um, it was a hour and a half that I spent thinking about what Easter is about, you know, which is, um, you know, 
Jesus, you know, them rolling the stone away and uh, Jesus rising from the dead. And that's how we know he's God. Um, and so that was time that I spent thinking about those things. Ultimately, the scene I was trying to paint um, was actually um, like the scene um, of Doubting Thomas, the story of Doubting Thomas. Um, so if you're not, uh, if you're not a Christian or, or you're not up, you know, if you haven't read your Bible, um, basically, uh, so they roll the stone away. Jesus is, is not in the tomb because he is risen from the dead. And um, he appears to the disciples. And when he appears to the disciples the first time, Thomas is not present. And so the other disciples tell um, Thomas that Jesus is back and he has, he has, you know, he's alive and has risen from the dead. And Thomas makes the comment that he won't believe it until he sees um, the, the nail marks in his hands and the wounds in his side. And then so Jesus appears to them again. Um, and this time with Thomas present and says, um, you know, shows him his wounds and says, um, you know, you believe because you've seen and um, blessed are those who believe and have not seen, which is if you are Christian, uh, like myself, that's that's me and you. Um, and so that was what was just really kind of on my heart and what I wanted to paint. And I knew that it was kind of a little bit outside. Um where I was at, but it was worth trying anyway. Um, and so I'm glad that I did, uh, even though it didn't work out. And so that kind of relates back to this card because um, originally this one didn't work out either. <laughs> um, so here I, I did originally start with a C3. It felt very kind of like stainless steel to me, which is like very clinical. I don't, I don't know. I just didn't like it. It didn't seem warm and cozy, like how you would be having tea for two. So, um, I decided that I was going to add a little bit of texture, almost like a black wood grain. Um, but really it was just stripes. Honestly, people, I'm not even kidding you. This was not, I mean, it's not like it took some great amount of talent. I just filled it in with a C5 and then did stripes with the C7 and, and the black marker and it gave it some texture. Moving on to the cups. I'm going to color the cups as if they were white, um, but because I used the cool colors for the countertop, I'm going to use warm grays for my cups. I'm doing this as if it had a center highlight, so um, the lightest part will be in the middle of the cup and the middle of the plate. I'm adding shading from the left and the right hand sides, both on the cup and around the saucer. I will do one little line of shading at the front of the um, saucer because we do have a side view. Um, and then in the back, the, like the lip of the cup in the back, um, would be darker on the edges where it curls around, but lightest in the center. So that's what I'm doing there. But anywho, um, so when I was doing this card, I was very rushed and I didn't have a lot of time. It was a very, very busy weekend for us. Um, so... Friday, we had uh, plans to go out with Eric's friends. We had um, dinner with a friend of his that just got engaged. And then from there, one of his buddies um, just finished up a pretty intensive um, nursing class. Um, so he's kind of furthering his education. And so we went to celebrate with him, which was actually kind of uh, cool because the, the bar that we went to, it was like super industrial, which is not my scene, but uh, it allowed dogs in there. So there was like all of these puppies everywhere and I just loved them. There was like these two super cute Dalmatians and um, this other little uh, really soft black puppy. Um, so that was fun. Back to the card. So here's where things go awry. Okay, so I wanted to add like a pattern to the cups. Um, I would never buy cups that look, this is no offense if you have cups like this, but it's just not my style. It's very busy and I would never buy cups like this. So I have no idea why I decided to draw cups like this. Um, it, uh, I don't know. Like I really thought it would be cute to have like the little floral border, but it was way too busy. It was way too, too much, too much, too much. And I just didn't love it. And sometimes that happens using this white gel pen to um, really make sure the highlight on that vase cup thing, whatever we're calling it, um, was really strong. And then I'm going to outline in my EK Success journaling pen like I normally do. And then this was what I was able to achieve um, and before the blog hop went live. 
And then I came home after all of the Easter celebrations and um, I was like, you know what, I can't, I can't just let it lie. Like I know how to fix it and there's no reason for me not to fix it to make it a card that I knew the potential that it had. So I stamped out two more coffee cups. I colored them back up. Um, if you're going to fussy cut anything, please uh, outline them first if that's part of your game plan like it is for me because um, otherwise you're chasing those little die cuts around and that's a nightmare. They're not die cuts. Little fussy cuts. Little images. What do we call it? Little images? Little images. Um, fussy cutting. Cut with your dominant hand. Turn the paper with your less dominant hand. So for me, right hand dominant. Hold the scissors there. Turn the paper with my left hand. It will give you a smoother cut. Um, so once those are all cut out, I'm going to take a Memento Tuxedo Black Marker because it's water-based. Always use water-based. Um to go around the edges. Alcohol base still bleed into your images. And then because I'm not going to cut out that little section of the um, mugs, I'm just going to color them the same way that I colored the countertop. Then I'm going to glue them down. Since I had this idea and I was like so excited about it, um, I started trying to glue down the one up front first, which is not right. And then I realized it almost immediately. Um, so I was able to just pull it back up because the one in the background has to go down first. And I'm just going to cover up these teacups that I don't like at all. And then um, all is going to be well in the world. And then I'm going to be able to fill in the scene for, um, to make the card complete, I guess, achieve the potential that I knew that it had in my brain. So I am going to speed up kind of the drawing portion of it because uh, I wanted to be able to show it to you. But ultimately it isn't anything... Um, that's super important, I guess, because you're going to see me do the black portion of it. This is just me kind of sketching it out. So back to the, um, so I didn't, I didn't love the card and I didn't love the way that my art was coming out. And, um, but there's always, there's a lesson in the process, guys. Honestly, there really, really is. And I know that it can seem very disheartening, uh, when you're doing it, but there don't give up. Like there's a way to fix it there is a way to fix it and you aren't the only person who makes cards that you don't love a hundred percent um and please don't only share what you love like even though I didn't love that card that card still went up on that blog hop um and it did because somebody else may love it or it may inspire somebody else to draw a like maybe they never thought about drawing a, a pattern on their coffee cups and maybe it doesn't need to be floral um but now they'll they'll start thinking about that and viewing things differently. And we can always be inspiring and encouraging each other. Um, so even if you don't love it 100%, please still share it. Uh, because you, you know, you don't know what other craft sparks you could be setting off um, for someone else. So, yeah. Going back to our weekend. So then Saturday, we have a um, an officer that works with us who's going to be going to another department, which makes me happy and sad. Um, very sad to see him go, but very happy that he's uh, moving on to something else that maybe is um, will work better for his family, even though we will miss him. So we did that, and it was super fun to kind of hang out with everybody outside of work. Um, because like you you know I mean you see each other at work but it's it's different it's it's a di different atmosphere, um, and being able to you know see everybody's wives and their kids and all of those things that's always very nice, um, and then Sunday was obviously Easter, um, so we went uh, my ex husband had peanut in the morning I did not have him I had him in the evening, um, so in the morning we went out and had um, brunch with Eric's family which was nice. Um, trying, I guess, finding a new, um, new normal of what, what the things are. And, um, they're always, uh, they're always very nice. His mom got me a Easter basket, which was super sweet. Um, I remember well, the last time I told you we went to dinner and they were teasing me about the amount of sugar that I put in my coffee. So she put like this disposable, <laughs> um, like the, um, sugar canister in my Easter basket, which I thought was hysterical. Um. So that was really nice. And then he had to go to work. I uh, came home um, and then went and got peanut and then went to my mom and dad's house for dinner. We, uh, you know, hung out. The Easter Bunny gave him his things um, from my house and from my mom's house. And then um, had dinner, hung out, got to catch up with my siblings, um, my nieces and nephews, and then... Um, 
my mom bought Nathan sari for Easter. And um, so we, <laughs> that was like, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know what games like you guys played. Like if I'm sure ever, if you played games, if your family was a family that played games, you guys probably had the ones that you went back to over and over again. For me and my middle sister, Kim, it was sorry, 100%. Like we played sorry so much. And so, but sorry has changed. I don't know if you know this. Sorry has changed quite a bit. Um, well, I mean, not like, I guess not that much, but I was a little bit like, what is happening here? Uh, just to touch back on the card. So I decided to do hardwood floors, but again, it's not going to be anything that's close enough that's going to have a whole lot of detail. So it's really just stripes. Just, I filled in the whole thing with the E23. This was an easy pick for me because I had already done the T and E29. And this is how you know it's T for me because my coffee would never be that dark ever, ever, ever. <laughs> um, lots of cream, lots of sugar. Um, but so uh, I'm just doing the same thing. Filled it in with the lightest color and then just adding the little stripes of color to give it the illusion of being a hardwood floor in the background. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the stairs. Same colors, I mean, for the stairs. Um, and then when you do stairs, in order to give them some dimension, they're darker at the bottom, highlight on the top. So I'm just going to go through and do lines of color at the base of the um, stairs and making sure I always leave that highlight. The darkest part will be the thinnest line at the very base of each stair. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, so originally when I played Sorry as a kid, there were four pawns. There's not any more, yo. There's three. There's only three pawns. Um, and I don't know if it's because they were like, this game's too long. Let's just, you know, knock off one guy. You got to get out of start. I'm not really sure. Um, so that was, that was done. Um, so there's only three. And then um, there's also like, you always could go again on a two. Like if you picked a number two, so to get out of home, you have to have a one or a two. And then if you get a two, you get to go again. But then when we were reading the rules about something, um, it didn't even say you could go again on a two. We had been playing that way already the whole time. So, cause those are the original rules. I don't really, I, I guess it, I don't really care what the new ones are because that's how I know how to play. That's how my whole family knows how to play. So we could not go again on the two, even though we were. Um, and then the other one was, uh, originally you couldn't slide on your own color. Um, I'm pretty sure it was you couldn't slide on your own color. Well, then this one said you could only slide on your own color. So if you played Sorry, you tell me if those are different rules than what you remember or what you know, because I'm pretty sure that they're completely different. Um, but my sister played with Peanut. Um, they were a team together, honestly, because there was five of us who wanted to play and there was only four, <laughs> you know, it's blue, yellow, red, green. There, there's only four spots to do that. And um, we wanted everybody to be able to play. So my sister played with my son and they won the first round. Um, and then the second time around, my oldest sister, Michelle, won. Um, so, but it was a really, really good time. And it's always nice to just be able to hang out and, you know, spend time together because life does get in the way of things. Um, so here for the card, I wanted like, there's like this little back stairs, like this little alcove, uh, hallway here. So that will be darker because it's a little bit more inset. And then I just added a little bit of shading to the left and the right. So it wasn't quite so, um, light blue. I will caution you, be careful, like going around a darker frame because a lighter color marker will pick up the darker color and it can spread it around. So be very, very careful about that. I'm going to add a shadow underneath this frame that says T for two um, down into the left because again, that's just what I'm most comfortable doing. And then I'm also going to add a shadow to the picture frames that are in the hallway there. Um, they kind of look like windows at this point, but they, they are picture frames. It'll make sense by the time we get to the end of it, I promise. Um, but yeah, so it was just, it was a good weekend. Um, we had decent weather. Friday, it poured buckets, so that was less fun, and it was cold. Uh, thanks, Cleveland. Um, but then Saturday was a little bit chilly, but at least it was dry, and we were able to have, like, a bonfire, and then Easter, um, turned out to be a beautiful, beautiful day, and it was, re it was really good weather today, too, though I think we're supposed to have thunderstorms tomorrow. Um, so once all the, like, 
paint on the walls was done, I decided to go in and just do kind of like some abstract painting just to bring in some more of that orange and yellow. So I just did um, like triangles and stripes, nothing too fancy, just enough to make it kind of like some wall art um, and bring those colors back in. So that with that being done, I'm going to go in. That's how, that's how in a rush I was the first time, guys. I didn't even add glitter to this card. That, I mean, that's not even a finished card. So um, I added some, this is the clear uh, glitter gloss from Nuvo, adding that to the vase, the flower, the little heart, and then the tea. And then that's it. That's the, the whole card. So thank you guys so much for hanging in with me. I know it's a long one. Um, I appreciate it. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye.